welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to positive New Deal solutions and the candidates who advocate for them. I'm Angela Trusty, your host for today. On today's show, we'll be talking about or we'll be giving an update on a local project slated to construction as early as 2018. More on that later. Green TV is about New Deal eco jobs for the economy, eco capitalism and positive solutions, prices that tell the environmental truth. Green TV is about the green industrial revolution, solar jobs, wind jobs, weatherization, rail, conservation and efficiency jobs. Green TV is about building green neighborhoods that are walkable, bikeable and rail friendly, making sure there's clean air and clean water. Green TV is about renewable energy and clean energy. Green TV is also about rail and the fact that rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. Trains can move our country forward. Maryland is moving forward with Purple Line Metrolink. Maryland also previously received federal funding to study high-speed rail from DC to Baltimore, which promises a 15-minute ride. Much of these funds will be used to study the environmental impact of this project. Six possible routes have been presented and worked on since 2012. Expedited transit getting from Baltimore to D.C. in 15 minutes could be a reality, possibly in the next decade. But there are still obstacles to overcome. Avajoy Burnett reports on the new push to bring a Japanese-made train to our area. It's a futuristic looking train that literally levitates at speeds of more than 300 miles per hour. It's already in Japan, and a $28 million federal grant has just been released to study what it would take to get the technology here. The company that's spearheading this proposal says a commute between D.C. and Baltimore would take just 15 minutes and just another 45 minutes to New York, revolutionizing travel as we know it. Our infrastructure, highways, bridges, airports, rail, all of that's crumbling, and so we have to do something different or it's going to be really rough for our children. The price tag for a project like this, between 10 and $12 billion. Maglev Northeast anticipates that money would come from the private sector, the federal government, and from the Japanese, where the technology has already been in use for decades. Now, this comes at a time when the government is making a big push to improve the nation's transportation system, and many commuters are on board. My commute right now is two hours. So anything to shorten it would be great. I'm from New York, so I know what it is to, to be on the train for hours on end. Uh, I mean, if it's safe, then I'm, I'm all for it. The Maryland Transit Administration is undertaking the environmental impact study for the next two years. When you can go from Baltimore to Washington in 15 minutes, it means that these two metropolitans are going to be one. You can live in one and work in another and be home in, 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 in a very reasonable time. MTA says this could have a significant significant economic impact on Baltimore and the region as a whole. Avajoy Burnett, WJZ Eyewitness News. After the study, the first high-speed train between D.C. and Baltimore could go into operation by 2026. Here in Virginia, VRE is struggling with a much-needed platform extension at the Crystal City VRE station. Welcome aboard the Virginia Railway Express, otherwise known as the VRE. VRE is a commuter rail system serving Northern Virginia and the District of Columbia. Our mission is to offer safe, cost-effective, accessible, customer-responsive and reliable passenger rail service. We operate Monday through Friday, mainly during rush hour, with the exception of one midday train on each line. We carry approximately 20,000 people a day. We have two lines, both converging in Washington, D.C. at Union Station. One line originates in Fredericksburg and the other in Manassas, with several stops in between. Fares and schedules, as well as the system map, are available online at www.vre.org. Maps are also posted at every station and available in our Rider's Guide, which can be mailed to you or picked up on the train. Parking is available at all VRE origination stations, but not at the destination stations. The number of spaces for each station is designated on our website. Good morning. Good morning. Tickets must be purchased before you board, either from a ticket vendor or from a ticket vending machine located on the platform. Ticket vendors accept all major credit cards, cash, ATM cards, and some accept checks. Locations and phone numbers are listed on the website and in the Rider's Guide. 
Ticket vending machines do not accept cash, only credit or ATM cards. Several types of tickets are available. Single ride, round trip, 10 ride, five day, monthly, TLC, joint metro and BRE, discount tickets for seniors and persons with disabilities, and a step up ticket, which enables you to board an Amtrak train using a VRE monthly, five day, TLC, or 10 trip ticket. Step up tickets are purchased from the ticket vending machines or ticket vendors for $5. Both tickets must be presented to the conductor on board the Amtrak train after boarding. They look just like a regular VRE ticket, but say, step up. Choose your destination, type of ticket, and how you wish to pay. If you purchase a single, five-day, 10-trip, or round-trip ticket, it must be validated by inserting it into the ticket vending machine so that a date and time will be stamped on it. When waiting for the train, stand behind the yellow tactile strip. The station will make audio and visual announcements when your train is about to arrive. After boarding, find an available seat. Bench seats are priority seating for people with disabilities and wheelchairs. Up to two bicycles may be brought on board the last three trains and the midday train if the space is available. Bikes must be bungeed to the south end bench seat frame. While on the train, display your ticket at all times by placing it in the clip on the seat in front of you. A conductor will walk up and down the aisle checking tickets. Cup holders are available for your convenience. And food and non-alcoholic beverages are permitted. Restrooms are available on every train. You can relax by reading, listening to music, or getting some work done. On every train, there is one quiet car located closest to the locomotive. While sitting in this car, talking above a whisper is not allowed and all cell phones and handheld music players must be turned off. Audio and visual station announcements will be made before each stop. Remember to take your belongings with you when you detrain. Don't forget to retrieve your ticket when you leave. VRE connects with Metro at five convenient locations. Simply purchase a Metro Pass in the station, or if you have a TLC card, you can use it on Metro for no additional cost. Thank you for riding VRE. For more information or questions, call 703-684-1001 or visit our website at www.vre.org. Yeah, no joke. newly opened Crystal City Multimodal Center and many other transportation modes. Option two offers the best potential to balance the goals of offering clear and direct access between Crystal Drive and VRE station ramps and platform. Option two provides the best opportunity to attract more VRE riders and encourage more people to travel more frequently by non-SOV trips due to better connections, reduced walk time, and closer proximity to the more envisioned development. An improved station at, at location two would create opportunities to better align VRE service. We want to emphasize the regional aspect of the transportation hub component, and also we want to note that it establishes the most seamless transitions as possible to attract the attractiveness. Last slide. In closing, I'd like to comment on VRE's planning study process. County staff representing county's transportation division and planning division serve on VRE's technical working group for the project. Along with other working group members, we've served as a sounding board. We advised VRE on community engagement activities, attended community meetings, pop-up events, tours, briefings, and public hearings. We made sure that VRE had the latest land use data, economic development forecast available. VRE conducted a number of community meetings and outreach activities throughout the planning phase. VRE has stated its commitment to continuing community engagement in the next phase of project evaluation which will include mitigation where needed. 
So that concludes the formal presentation. Thank you for the opportunity to, pre to present the county manager's recommendation. We are available to answer questions. Thank you very much. I'll turn to the Planning Commission, Ms. Iacomini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Planning Commission heard this item at our September 7th public hearing. We received presentations from county and VRE staff and heard testimony from 11 public speakers. VRE staff indicated they wanted to be ready to go with the new station by fiscal 18 to dovetail with the other track work, and they only had funding to explore one option. Again, that was a disconnect for all of us that they were only going to really explore one option. It was not clear what would happen if that option were found to have some fatal flaws, nor what a fatal flaw would be. In looking at the evaluation charts, uh, much seemed to rest on option three having an additional 400 feet to the metro. And we'll remember that 18% of the ridership of VRE goes to the metro, so not a whole lot of it. Commissioners were divided on the possible negative effects of having to walk that 400 feet since Crystal City is a very walkable area, plus there would be people passing by the first floor retail. And there are metro connections available to, at other VRE stations such as LaFont Plaza. And by the way, according to WMATA, <laughs> travel time between Crystal City Station and Ballston is 21 minutes. Between LaFont Plaza and Ballston, it's 20 minutes. So there's not a lot of difference. VRE reminded us their riders, however, are not Arlingtonian, Arlingtonians, but rather from Spotsylvania County, and they might have different habits. A commissioner also questioned weighing the bus connection time so heavily. Again, VRE said commuters are very sensitive to time and distance, and both must be optimized if VRE is to gain riders and not lose the ones they have. VRE noted passengers drive to the VRE stations, so they could just as easily drive into D.C., However, it was pointed out that might not necessarily follow because of the time spent in traffic and needing low or no cost parking in DC. It was also noted the pedestrian connection to the airport had not yet been determined. So we don't really know where that's going to go and how that factors into these three options is difficult to know. The location of the biggest and the most stable employment site, the Pentagon, was not factored into the options in the half mile walking radius even though VRE's use chart shows over one third of the passengers are walking there now from VRE. All the commissioners did agree that the number of jobs in Crystal City has been fluctuating, but we all do want it to have a strong jobs growth and be a thriving employment center. Commissioners discussed the horn and noise issue and were glad VRE had been doing some noise modeling, even though normally at this stage they would not have done so, so it was nice of them to do that. Commissioners felt such modeling and perhaps more of it from additional points in the residential building was really essential for further discussion. The horn noise from CSX trains uh, that are required to blow their horns in stations, and again, if they dwell longer than, I believe, 90 seconds, commissioners uh, had hoped that the county board was working with CXX, CSX to further modify horn noise in the area. Uh, questions were raised about environmental impacts, and VRE said the NEPA process had not yet begun, and they did not have a budget to address any NEPA issues. After discussion, commissioners began to make motions. The first was that the Planning Commission recommend to the County Board support option two and three for the VRE next phase. Another substitute was offered just to endorse option two, and that failed for lack of a second. The main motion passed, six to one with one abstention. Uh, Commissioners had not felt that there was just enough evaluative information, nor had there been enough process to narrow the options to only one choice. We made an additional motion that the Planning Commission recommend the County Board instruct the County Manager to initiate a process to engage CSX on mitigating noise from the operation of their rail lines in urban areas. The motion was amended to substitute the word Crystal City for urban areas. So that, that amended motion passed unanimously, eight to zero. Thank you very much, and I'll be here this evening if you have additional questions. All right, thank you. And Mr. Slatt, representing the Transportation Commission. Thank you. Uh, the Commission has heard about this VRE Crystal City Station at multiple meetings. Um, at our June 1st meeting, we heard a presentation from VRE staff. At our June 29th meeting, we heard public comment from multiple residents of Crystal City and many representatives of condominium boards in Crystal City. Um, on August 14th, uh, we took a walking tour on site in Crystal City and heard the VRE trains firsthand and the horns firsthand and the CSX trains firsthand and all of the other noises of Crystal City. Um, at our August 31st meeting, we heard further public testimony from a Crystal City condominium board. And on September 13th, we held a special meeting to address 
uh, this issue and only this issue. Um, at that meeting, we heard from VRE staff, uh, from county staff, as well as 10 public speakers representing Crystal City citizens, Crystal City condo boards, the Crystal City bid, as well as JBG Vornado. Uh, based on the information currently available, the commission feels that option two is the clearly superior option. It's proximity to Metro, to jobs, to future development, to Metroway, and to National Airport all point clearly in its favor. Um, in transportation, time and convenience are king. Sally, how many speakers do we have? 13. 13 speakers, all right. Um, we all know what time it is, so yeah. uh, please, we welcome your comments. If you, you, somebody before you has said the same thing, you certainly can truncate yours to some degree and reference theirs, but it is totally your choice. We will be here as long as the 13 speakers take. Um, please call the first two. First speaker is Andrew Van Horn, followed by Michael Wiseman. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Andy Van Horn. I'm a, a, a development executive with the JBG Smith Companies. As you may know, we recently merged with Bornado and, and own you know, significant holdings in Crystal City now. Uh, my team has been very engaged in this process with VRE. Uh, we've, we've certainly had conversations with the community and I've had conversations with many of the county uh, personnel. We are strongly in support of option two for many of the reasons enumerated by uh, our trans the Transportation Commission team. Uh, and VRE, uh, we think that it serves the most economic benefit for all of Crystal. It's the most well located to serve the broad array of jobs south and north in Crystal. Uh, it does provide great visibility, which provides the opportunity for people to see it and utilize it and induce demand. And uh, we are also excited because we've been working with the county and, and WMATA about expanding uh, the metro entrance to the east. And this does provide the most effective connectivity. Um, we really do encourage mass transit and all forms of multimodalism and think option two far and away uh, meets that goal most effectively. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Wiseman, followed by Audrey Clement. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Michael Wiseman. Uh, our group from CPUA is was ordered differently, so you'll be hearing a number of points. We won't repeat each other, but but uh, I hope you can follow it. I, my wife and I have been living in 1805 Crystal Drive for 19 years. Before that, for moving here, I was tenured as a professor of urban and regional planning at the University of Madison, at Wisconsin Madison, and then also at Berkeley. I used the VRE to get to work. Uh, my, but my home office is located, is one of those persons suffering a due uh, distress from this. It's located directly adjacent to the where the station would be located in option two, maybe 20 feet from the, uh, uh, over the, the vertical part of the vertical plane established by the track in option three. That said, I'm ne not necessarily a NIMBY. But I am a Canby. I'm concerned about my backyard, about my community, and more generally about professional planning uh, uh, practice. I make three points. First, as stated by uh, several of the, uh, the planning commissioners at our meeting, at the planning commission meeting, there is really very little difference between option two and option three in most of the outcomes. I don't think it would probably make much difference, but I want to make sure that we, if, if that's what's going to be, uh, what the Arlington County uh, Board would like us to do, We'll do it, and and we'll consider what the issues are that are arise. When we've done this work, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the the noise analysis again shows that there's not a significant impact uh, uh, because it's a noisy environment anyway. Uh, the air quality issue, uh, the trains are out there regardless. So I don't know that that's going to make that much of a distinction. The safety issue would be worked out during the the, the next level of design. Uh, might be ancillary to this is to see if we can get a list from the community about their specific questions. I think we've heard it summarized that it's noise, that it's vibration, it's this, but, but I, I suspect that the residents ha really have maybe even more. Maybe they're wondering about how many trains, will there be an increase in trains, just a lot of other things. So to make all of this meaningful, if we are going to narrow it to one option, is to get questions from them and add that to the mix. I Not in a motion, but... And many of those questions are here, and I think your point is well taken. There could be others that could be addressed, um, you know, more fulsomely in that conversation. So we have a motion, and while my colleagues read it, I, I would like to speak to it because I just want to honor and respect uh, that this is not the preferred option of a number of our residents 
whom, whose opinions I do value greatly. I've appreciated a great number of conversations and visits. Um, certainly intend myself to stay engaged. I know that's true of all of my colleagues. Um, but I would like to explain at least um, uh, my point of view about why option two um, is, is more optimal um, and is more optimal for the quality of life in Arlington County and in Crystal City. And I know, again, um, that we'll have differences of opinion here. Um, but I think the proximity to Metroway and Metrobus and the visibility of the station um, actually do translate into a quality of life improvement for those of us in Arlington County. Um, we have about, I think, 20,000 daily riders, maybe a little less, um, on Arlington, oh, excuse me, on the Virginia Railway Express. Um, and so, you know, I know Ms. Iacomini said, oh, 18% isn't a lot, right, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's roughly speaking about 5,000 riders every day disembarking. Nope, you're going to correct my math. Um, so I, I could be wrong. But I, but I think what I'm trying to suggest is, is just the number, of, um, uh, the, the number of individuals whom we are trying to get off of our roads, and specifically off of 22202 roads, where we know we've had traffic issues in the past, um, that our interests as a community are served when this is an attractive option for people to take rather than driving. I think uh, that it is, as others have said, more, com more consistent. Um, with our planning, including the locations of jobs as well as residential growth. Um, and I think, you know, this is a plan that, that really does hinge on at least access um, and at best a, a really complete train station um, through uh, a, a private um, development. And so I think it, it does bear some consideration what the owner of that private developer com development comes in with. The last point I wanted to make um, in support of the second part of this motion um, is that I do, I really, uh, through many conversations with Ms. Fuller and her comments tonight, and, and the time I've spent on the site, I really do think that some of our biggest problems with noise, um, with vibration, uh, with emissions, do come from those freight trains. Um, I have had a number of conversations with Ms. Fuller and with our, increasingly our county attorney, who, along with VRE, started these conversations with CRSX. Um, you've impressed upon me the urgency of moving that forward. Um, my understanding, um, and uh, I would in, this may be a question as well for VRE, is that uh, the CSX, where the CSX trains stop, is not really driven by where the platform is. And I know that whatever way, whatever um, plan or option we endorse, uh, that problem will persist. And I think it is, um, and that point has been well made to me, uh, incumbent upon us as the Arlington County Board to move forward. So all of which uh, is to describe my support for the motion below. Um, the motion, motion in front of us. Seconded. No. So uh, this is the motion that I'm going to make that is before us. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, now the conversation is about the substitute motion. Is there other conversation? Mr. Dorsey. I'd just say very briefly, uh, you know, I think, Ms. Crystal, this is artfully crafted. I congratulate you and Ms. Garvey and Mr. McIsaac for getting it done uh, as quickly as you were. Since there is two steps and that the board is being asked to uh, provide comment at two different steps in the process, I would just like to think about maybe a different word at the beginning, um, you know, that we are accepting that option two is the preferred uh, location by VRE, and I'm not, hope you don't need to, do this yet, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and you'll tell me if this is friendly, to use a word at the beginning that, that's more along the lines of accept, since at the end you're essentially saying that we will, I guess, weigh in again at the point at which VRE is making a go or no go, at which point I would think that's when we would want to put our imprimatur of support on it. I would very much accept that as friendly. I think that is really consistent with the spirit of what we're suggesting and would love your help on the right verb. Okay, great, thank you all. Since my math is a little off tonight, I don't trust my grammar either, so. Look up, yeah. look in the thesaurus and we'll see. Uh, we'll put some words in. You, the support thee becomes accept. I'll, I'll, I'll is look that at the correct? thesaurus, I'll see. Accept uh, option number two, station location. Into as the preferred station location as wait hold on as as VRE's preferred station location. Well, you have VRE further in those sentence. But I think the point is, it's not yeah. Mr. Rossi saying it's not our preferred; it's VRE's preferred at this time. Yeah. Preferred station location. Location and. Uh, Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> okay. Is that... Okay, that's a friendly amendment, Ms. Crystal, Absolutely. Ms. Garvey. Yes. Other comments on this, Mr. Weistat? Yes, I, I do not intend to support this um, alternative motion because I really think that, as somebody said a little earlier, it does just kind of kick the can down the road that we need to make a decision. And uh, I stand by my original motion to support option three. Any other comments, Mrs. Uh, did you have any Although it's certainly on? preferable to the manager's original motion. And I, I, I'll just say that I, I do support the motion. I, I think that uh, from my reading of the, all the information and the, the material that's come through the board office, um, to me, the arguments made by the Transportation Commission were very powerful. Um, I, uh, in the work I've done over years in the area of connecting communities and building communities and, and embedding a transportation network there, minutes make a difference. And uh, uh, the optimal location as it relates to the broader local and regional transportation network is probably the most poignant. And they've, they've looked at most poignant issue. Um, even when the noise issue came up, the analysis so far was that while there's perception of an issue, the implication was nominal at the different points along the way. We know the whistles are a problem. The whistles will be worked on, but they're out of our control. Um, if there were no whistles, everyone that lives there would be happier. I totally get it. If I could eliminate them and continue safety, uh, the safety culture, I, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but that is something that somebody else is paid to do, not this board. Um, so at this point in time, uh, to me, the professional staff recommendation, which isn't exactly in front of us, but is largely reflected in my view here, allowing for some further engagement, and I think uh, positive shaping of this outcome will be a good thing. Uh, the motion is before the board. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Carries four to one. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you all for coming and sticking with us as late as it is. We are not done. You can use it on Metro for no additional cost. Thank you for riding VRE. For more information or questions, call 703-684-1001 or visit our website at www.vre.org. VRE is clean energy and free energy. We need more trains and less traffic. That's it for today. I'm Angela Trusty, your host, and we hope that you'll join us next time.